with headache, dizziness, and hearing loss. Here you see some images from the posterior fossa through the temporal bones. Here you see additional images from that level. Uh, these are pre and post contrast images. This is just a coronal image for you to try to figure out kind of where that is uh, centered, where it's coming from. Just some additional coronal images. These are the last images. Your first question is which structure is this mass most likely rising from? Just let you read those choices there. Question B, statistically, what is the most common cerebellar pontine angle mass? So is it arachnoid cyst, epidermoid, meningioma, or vestibular schwannoma? Uh, this is a case of meningioma. So this is a very common mass located in the cerebellar pontine angle. They tend to be relatively homogeneous uh, in uh, avidly enhancing masses. They could be adjacent hyperostosis. Uh, they can be kind of T2 variable, but they tend to be relatively bright unless they have hemorrhage or calcification. Uh, if you do uh, perfusion, they'll be hyperperfusing. And similarly, they will be FDG avid on PET. So don't really try to look, uh, look for hyper uh, metabolism to differentiate it from a metastasis or something. Now, in many cases, you'll be trying to differentiate this from a schwannoma. The best feature you can look for is where the mass is centered. If it's in the IEC, it's likely a schwannoma. If it's out of the IEC, it's likely a meningioma. Look for expansion of the IEC because they can both involve the IEC as is the case in this uh, case. But I'll show you guys here in just a second. Now, if you have a cerebellar pontine angle mass, I like to think through this uh, flow chart here. If you want to take a look, like decide first if you think it's solid or cystic. And by that, typically, like whether or not there's enhancement is what's going to tell you that. If it's solid, so it has enhancement. Uh, if it expands the IEC and has cystic areas, then it's probably a schwannoma. If it's homogeneously enhancing or has calcification uh, and is located outside of the IEC, that's probably a meningioma. Now, cystic masses include arachnoid cysts, which will follow CSF on all sequences, or epidermoid, which will be similar to CSF, but not quite, and will have reduced diffusion. So think about this if you're seeing cerebellar pontine angle lesions. Uh, here you see the lesion that you saw before. It's in the left cerebellar pontine angle. Uh, this is a T2. You see a nice CSF cleft between the middle cerebellar peduncle, which is here. And so you think this is an extra axial mass. On pre-contrast, again, you see a little cleft of CSF. It's relatively homogeneous, and you see it extending into the internal auditory canal. So on post-contrast, you have a little extension into the IAC and maybe a little bit of a dural tail here. So that doesn't necessarily help you differentiate a meningioma and a schwannoma, but in this case, uh, it does kind of favor a meningioma. Here you can see the IEC is involved, but it's not particularly expanded. So you see on the coronal, it's just kind of crawling along there, but it doesn't really seem to be either centered in the IEC or expanding the IEC. Uh, which structure is this mass arising from? Well, this is one, since it's a meningioma, is arising from the dura. If you thought this was a schwannoma, then uh, schwannomas tend to arise from the vestibular nerves. Uh, the facial nerve can get schwannomas, but uh, that's by far not the most common in this location. Um, which is the most common cerebellar pontine angle mass? So simply by statistics, vestibular schwannoma comprise far more of the vestibular, I mean, of the uh, cerebellar pontine angle masses than any of the others. So uh, that's by far going to be the most common.